the regular select board meeting for uh, Monday, March 19th, and because it's the first of the year, we are due for a reorganization. So as vice chair, I open the floor for nominations for chair. I nominate Brad Pine. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor of Brad Town being chair, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Brad, congratulations. Thank I'll you. turn it over to you. Do uh, you have any motions for vice chair? I'll nominate Jeremy Hansen as vice chair. Any second? Uh, any other nominations? Hearing none. Those in favor of Jeremy Hansen as vice chair, say aye. 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 Those opposed? And now nominations for secretary. And I nominate Wayne Lamberton. And a second? Sure. And any other nominations? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Congratulations, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the second on the last one? Jeremy? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, let's see here. Additions or changes to the agenda? I have no changes to the agenda. And public comment? Hearing none. Um, uh, Chuck Storrow, Berlin Mall. Mr. Chairman, if I could just have Diane go fast, because she's got just a short okay. thing, and I could, yep. that way I don't have to pay her after she goes. <laughs> oh, turn it for quick, right? I always say what I think. Okay, for the Treasurer's report, I provided the February delinquent tax reports, budget status report, and final trial balance, and trial balance to the select board. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, tax sale information and stuff like that. Um, four of the five people that I sent sex tax sales letters to want to go to the Board of Abatement. And I've talked with the town clerk, and she's saying that she's going to have a meeting probably at the end of March or the beginning of April for that. And I'll keep you aware when that happens. Um, and then um, nine of the people that I have sent tax letters to have made payment arrangements, and some of them have already made some payments, and some have paid in full, so that's excellent. But there are seven that still have not made any payments, so those will be going to the attorney for a possible tax sale. So I want to make you aware of the status of that. And that's all I've got. Mr. Storo. Okay, thank you, Doc. Good evening, uh, folks. Uh, Chuck Storo, lawyer for Berlin Mall. Um, here to follow up on uh, my uh, conversation with you at the March 5 meeting relative to trying to bring to resolution this issue of the ownership of the mall's access road to Route 62. Um, rather than going over that whole background there, um, just reference the fact that the board did vote uh, at that March 5 meeting to take over a 50-foot stretch of that access road, subject to seeing, you know, uh, language about uh, maintenance um, with, you know, the understanding here being that the, uh, the mall will continue to maintain that road. I uh, followed up and sent Dana and you members a uh, proposed uh, instrument in that regard, and so I'm here to hopefully get it signed by you. I had sent that over to Rob Halpert, and he had no objection to it. He did mention he had not seen the map. Um, this is the map that was recorded, um, and it doesn't really say a lot to me, to be honest. Um, yeah, okay. He did not feel that we needed to have a public hearing um, on this because of... Do we have to do a name it? Do we have to name it? Do we have to have a hearing to name it if we choose to do yes, that? Yes, you would. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's that's the survey that Wayne Lawrence did. Oh gosh, what's the date there, Dana? It's early eighty seven. Eighty seven as built drawing of the whole mall property and everything on it. Here's the property line uh, between the mall's property and the state's land. Um, 
and you know we'd be taking over or the U would be taking over 50 feet of uh, this road from that uh, property line there uh, 60 foot wide centered on the uh, center line of the travel portion of that so it's pretty straightforward and it's a good uh, I was trying to find the agreement we did classify it as a class four road correct? right that's, yes. what, the, that's yes. what the instrument provides that you would take it as a class four road and I put in on the maintenance language the language from the statute dealing with uh, the town's obligation to maintain class three roads uh, um, figuring that if we maintain t to the uh, degree that a town would be required to do for a class <laughs> three road that that would should be sufficient basically it has to be you know usable year round by a regular standard passenger vehicle I guess I still have reservations about this in terms of um, the rural character of the town and having heard some feedback from residents about this um, I'm just not I'm not personally interested in seeing Berlin, you know, even with additional development in the, over by the mall, of this becoming another um, Williston-looking area. Again, like I said the last time, this is really kind of following through on something that the town started off with in the late 70s uh, when this property the, that's currently owned by my client was being contemplated by development and uh, the town petitioned the transportation board and was pretty clear in doing that that um, it would be a public highway. VTrans is um, um, interested in this issue because strictly speaking that's a limited access highway route 62 and you're not supposed to have a private road going to it so it's been out there for 30 plus years really no real problems except that every now and then it rears its head and Act 250 says things you know that's supposed to be a town road and we can't control that we bought them all in 2010 and uh, trying to you know just um, square away something that should have been dealt with a long time ago so I have to say I was rather young in the 70s but um, and did not have a say in that decision but I do get to have a say in this decision um, I mean, the, the, the purpose, again, just to, to restate the purpose of us taking over this road is so that you can clear trees in there so that people can see a restaurant from Route 62. Is that accurate? Yes and no. I mean, there's immediately a property uh, project in the works to do a restaurant that would involve some tree clearing on state land, but irregardless of that, um, this is an issue that applies, you know, not specific to that, it's something that came up when we went to replace the sign out there and Act 50 said, oh, you know, that was supposed to have been a town road and we had to go through a lot of yakking with the Natural Resources Board on that. If we ever did something else within the mall property, it could be an issue. So, you know, it, it, um, being prompted uh, at the hearing now by the potential <coughs> development of, of that portion of the property with a restaurant, but it's something that, you know, it's just out there that, um, VTrans wants to have it squared away. We're kind of neutral. We're kind of caught in the middle. Um, and we'd like to, to get it resolved so that it's no longer an issue. But it's your it's your call. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought we pretty much agreed we wanted to see a contract that was written up. I can't for some reason bring mine up to. I've got copy, but um, I I was able to review that. And if it's something we've agreed to move forward with, I mean, in the minutes we agreed to, if once we saw the contractual paperwork, which I read tonight, I don't know if it's been reviewed by the town attorney or... This paperwork has been, yes. What his thoughts were? Uh, his thoughts, he had no issue with it. As I mentioned, he had not, he did mention he did not have the map to look at, mm -hmm. um, which he didn't, and he also mentioned in many times when you're taking a road over, like in a development, most likely, there would be a public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, because of the, um, and I've forgotten the term of how it is, prescription or? Dedication. Dedication and, and acceptance. He didn't feel that a public hearing was necessary. Mm -hmm. So he has reviewed the document. And sort of to address your concern, Jerry, it's a little bit like, back, Jeremy, back in the day when Act 250 wanted every house to have 10 acres. 
and then they decided to do cluster housing and leave more land. It seems like this is the area that Berlin's developing. And I would rather see more development here and the rest of the town left alone than to try to spread it all over the neighborhood. Um, we're not the size of Williston. We don't have the population or the money of that area. And um, I'm in favor of allowing the mall to be a mall to serve the folks that are here as best it can. And I, I don't have a problem if they cut some trees down. I'd like to keep it right where they're doing it. But I mean, there, you know, we do have vacant buildings in Berlin, <coughs> vacant storefronts. Yeah. Um, and there is such thing as infill development. But that doesn't require necessarily, you know, new, you know, foundations, no. new stuff, more trees. Well, I think the whole country is going to go through a transition here, or is going through a transition with online shopping. You see where Joanne's Fabric is now a, a health place, and you know you can't buy health online. You might think you can, but you can't. You got to get out there and do the exercise. You know, food, all sorts of services, and. Um, restaurants are that and I think that it, even if it takes 10 or 15 years for us to straighten this out there's no sense in stopping until it's straightened out I mean things don't get straightened out if you don't move forward this, but this isn't preventing any development What's yeah. that? my voting no on this does oh, not no. prevent any development correct yeah. and, my, I'm and, sort of, and my opinion is that when it comes time for the development is a permit process and this is the select board in 1970s 70s agreed to take over this road. And for whatever reason, it was never followed through. I'm not comfortable taking over the road. But that's Which why I, I said, we'll take this little piece and call it a class four road to clean up the problem of the past. But it has nothing to do with future. I mean, we're not making a decision on the development. Right. So. I feel that we're doing what was agreed to be done in the 70s, and we're doing it to control the risk of the taxpayer by taking 50 feet of road and calling it a class four road. <clears throat> and if the town attorney's happy with the agreement, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. That's all. Any other discussion on this? I'll make a motion that we sign the agreement. Mayor, second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Opposed. Okay. Well, if you wouldn't mind, those of you who voted signing it now, or how do you want me to handle well, the logistics? The motion is not completed. We're not quite Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. duh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other? Are, are, are you voting yay, nay, or abstaining? I'm abstaining. I'm, yeah. I'm too new to, I think, make a decision. In that case, the ayes have it. And I guess we can sign your paperwork now. And you had it signed by my client, so once I'll take this and I'll get it recorded, and this will be it. So today is the 19th, right? Yes. And not knowing we prepared this before the uh, town. Uh, uh, Town meeting, so if you could sign and then print your name on your name for those of you that are signing. I will notarize it, and that those, uh, uh, Mr. Town, Mr. Lamberton, Mr. Kelly, that was your free act indeed? Yes. yes. Okay. 
I'll fill that out and I'll notarize that before I leave. Get out of your chair so you can bring it. Will you be bringing that to the clerk for I recording so. and she can get me a copy yeah, at that absolutely. time? Yeah. I can scan this into a copy tomorrow. Too. Thank you very much. Server stuff. Um, Tina Bowl from the Vermont Agency of Transportation. Um, yeah, I'm Tina Bowl from the Vermont Agency of Transportation. Um, we're here to talk about the Berlin Exit 7 park and riding improvements. Um, with me today is Scott Burbank, project administrator. Um, from Green International, our design consultant Eric Atkins is the new project manager that was assigned to this project. and. Dennis Furrier is the project engineer. Um, the agenda that we have today, you're going to, thank you, uh, outline the project development process, um, review the existing conditions at exit, exit 7, review the alternatives that we've studied, and then questions afterwards. Uh, in the project development process, first thing we do is collect and review the existing information. Um, after we do that, we uh, at, we solicit public input, and we held a local concerns meeting for this project on October 25th, 2016, um, where we finalized the project purpose and need. And from that public input, we um, had identified potential alternatives, including those um, that we learned at the local concerns meeting. We then evaluate and present alternatives and solicit public input, which we did on January 18th, 2018, this year. Um, and tonight, we're presenting the alternatives to you folks. Um, the next step is to also is to present alternatives to the um, Central Mountain Regional Planning Commission TAC to get a regional recommendation, and that's to be determined. Um, not sure what, what date we're, we're looking at yet. Um, and then we recommend, from based on those things, we recommend a preferred alternative to the Highway Division Management Team, and if they concur, we develop conceptual plans of that preferred alternative. So Dennis is going to um, go through the alternatives um, for us. Good evening. So, as you folks already know from living in this area, I don't have to tell you where the park and ride is. Um, you can see it's pointed out there at the existing location. Uh, it is at the intersection of Vermont 62 and Payne Turnpike North, uh, and that's exit, 70, uh, exit 7 off of I-89. The existing park and ride facility has capacity for 76 spaces, four of which are accessible spaces. There are two bus transit services that run through this area, uh, in the area of the park and ride, one of which actually stops at the existing facility, which is the stagecoach. Uh, we've been in talk with them uh, about the utilization of the existing park and ride and how often it's used and how it's used, and one of their major concerns with the existing site is access to it. Uh, they're very, it's very tight, uh, the parking is not well defined, and they have a very difficult time getting in and out of the facility, often having to do three point turns inside the facility to what ends up being you know five or six point turns before they can actually turn around and get back out. This slows them down and it discourages them from stopping at this location to pick up more transit riders. And so that's one of the things that we've been trying to address with our alternatives and you'll see that on all the alternatives that we show. Um, the different alternatives that we've looked at was six different alternatives at the existing location and three alternatives A, B, and C at other sites off, off of that location. Alternative A, you can see in the top right corner there, right here, is behind the library. Alternative B, here next to Shaw's, and alternative C, right between Shaw's, the Shaw's driveway and the dealership that's located there. Now, alternative A is the one that's behind the library. We had, looked at, we had looked at that one and evaluated it, and we were able to provide 142 parking spaces at that location, six of which would be accessible. The biggest issue with this site during our evaluation that came up was the lack of visibility from the main road, meaning the park and ride would not be visible from the street. Um, and uh, associated with that is safety concerns that would happen because of that, because of the lack of visibility. And um, along with that, the distance away from I-89. VTrans has, has learned over many years that the distance that the park and ride is away from the interchange, further it is away, the less likely it is that it will be utilized by people using park and ride facilities. Alternative B was the location next to the Shaw's Plaza. That is right here. 
Now you can see that green on the map, that's, that those are designated wetlands. And so as you can see, this location would be very difficult to develop a park and ride. Even though the land is open and available, it's mostly wetlands. And so permitting would be very difficult to, uh, to get to achieve that location um, as a park and ride. Also, the property is not owned by the state. And so it would require them to purchase that land to develop it. <coughs> the alternative C, the final one, is the location here between this driveway and the Honda dealership. That land is also not owned by VTrans, so it would need to be purchased, and it is also subdivided into multiple parcels, which, which would make that more difficult um, of a process. Both of these locations were, were looked at and evaluated, but deemed to not be the best alternative for a new park and ride facility. Now, alternative one is the first one that is located at the existing facility. That one is almost a, you could consider it a do-nothing alternative. We would do minor changes within the existing footprint, so we would restripe and you know add new lighting and things like that. But really, we wouldn't be achieving the goals of this project, which would be to create a park and ride where buses would be able to maneuver easily through the facility. And expansion, which is also, also a major component of this project, is to provide additional parking, um, which this would not do. Alternatives 2, 3, 4, and 5. I will group them together because they're very similar to one another. For the most part, the differences are the locations of the driveways, the types of driveways, and the types of exit points out of the park and ride. And I'll point those out to you folks. So one thing to note that all of these alternatives, the next four, have 135 spaces with five ADA spaces. They're also, their limits are here. The pavement limits are here on this left side. And as you can see, they line up pretty closely to where this uh, residential uh, home is that's located there. One thing to note about this alternative is that there's a stormwater management area here, which is needed in order to just treat the water that would be running off of the facility. Um, another thing that you can see on this alternative is that we've proposed to add, uh, to relocate the driveway from here at the existing location to here along, um, along Payne Road, Payne, um, Payne Pike, Pike, Pike Road, sorry. Private, and, private um, Pike Drive. Yes, private drive, correct. Private. Thank you, sir. Um, and that's right across from the credit union that's located there. That's, that would be this in this alternative. The other thing you can see is that we provided an exit only driveway out of the facility onto Route 62 going westbound. Here you can see this stretch of pavement on the far side is, is a widened area of pavement. That is done in order to allow the buses to be able to turn around and they need that extra turning space in order to make that maneuver. Now the rest of these are going to be very similar and you'll see that, but one of the differences between alternative two and three is that we've eliminated the <coughs> driveway out onto Payne, uh, I mean route, Vermont Route 62 and added a right turn only lane here at this intersection. We've also shown the driveway at the relocated location here. Alternative four shows the driveway at the existing location here where it is now, and it does have the right turn only exit onto Route 62. It does not have any improvements at this intersection. Alternative 5 switches those two around, so it eliminates the driveway here, but does have the right turn only lane there. Um, all of these alternatives were then presented at the, late, at the latest public hearing, and through the feedback that we received during that hearing and some of the input that we've received since then, we've created an additional alternative, Alternative 6, which is what we'll be presenting as our preferred alternative. Alternative 6, as you can see here, I'm going to point out what some of these lines are. The red line that you can see here is the outline of the proposed alternatives that you saw previously, those four alternatives, that's how far they went, and they were able to achieve 135 spaces where this alternative provides 110 spaces. The other things to point out in this, in this plan is this black line here that shows the existing boundary of the existing park and ride, just so you can visualize the difference, the expansion. You can also see here that we've added a couple things. Rather than having only the right turn only lane here or the driveway, we've done both. And the reason for that is to help with the traffic flow at this intersection. Uh, 
We've done traffic evaluations at this intersections, and we've concluded that um, the this, the traffic there does back up um, going this way, going northbound. And so one of the things that we wanted to do was try to alleviate some of that stress on that intersection by adding this slip uh, right turn only driveway to allow people to exit the right, exit the park and ride going towards I-89 without going into this intersection. We've also added the right turn only lane here to provide an, ad an additional way for people in this area here to be able to make a right onto Vermont 62 without blocking up that road, without the people going straight or taking a left, blocking the people from being able to take that right. We've also added a do not block intersection striping and signage up here, as you can see. The point of that is to discourage people from stopping right in that intersection and blocking people from being able to make turning movements in and out of the park and ride and out of the private road here. As, as they're queuing to turn on to Yes, correct, as the queuing, right. Um, we can see we've also proposed landscaped area here. The purpose of this landscaped area is to provide screening from the park and ride. We've also done some grading evaluations and the, the goals are to, for us to lower the park and ride a little bit in this area here as we expand it and to provide a landscaping buffer from the private residential home here. And so there would be, it would, the grade would go up from the park and ride and on that grade we would put landscaping that would provide <coughs> screening um, in order to screen the visibility from the private residents of the park and ride itself. Um, at this point, I'd like to open it up for any questions or anything else that you folks want to add. Um, and I can leave it actually on this preferred alternative if you guys have questions about this. Go ahead. So um, I'm the, I own the home there. Um, and my biggest question about this is the landscaped area that's the buffer. Mm -hmm. My understanding in meeting and having a private conversation with the commissioner of transportation and talking this all out was that there was going to be a berm there. Yes, that is, that's something that we'll, we'll, we'll be looking at. Um, the berm that we would be able to provide would not be a berm that is you know six or seven feet tall. It would be a berm that is most likely two or three feet tall based on the grading that's there. One of the things that we want to make sure that we don't do is have any grading outside of the, of the state right away. And meaning we don't want to grade beyond the fence that's here along this red right away line. And so because of that limitation, we'll be able to raise that area as much as we can, I would say about two to three feet. And then we would put plantings, trees and shrubs on top of that to provide that additional screening. The other thing that we will be doing by changing the grading of the park and ride, by lowering the actual parking lot itself and maintaining the elevation of the ground around it, we'd be naturally creating a berm around the facility because it would be lower, below the existing level that's there now. How far down below grade were you going to take it? Um, it, so the, the whole topography of this area here is that uh, here it's a it's a it's a slight hill, and I think Mr. Clark, uh, you're familiar with that. This is kind of a high area here, and then it slopes down this way and down this way. Now at that high area, we would be probably lowering it about two to three feet. That's that's kind of what we're looking at right now, um, and that some of those details will get worked out when we do actual full plan development into conceptual and preliminary plans. But at this level, that is the level of detail that we can provide. It's about two to three feet of elevation drop. So you're talking about dropping it two to three feet and then building a berm that's two to three feet? So, so yeah, the berm wouldn't be necessarily built up. It would just naturally result from the lowering of the park and ride. But beyond that, on the end of the parking area, there's no... Here? Yeah, there's no limitation to the berm height there. Right, so there we would be able to grade it out and do and would be able to provide a, a higher berm because we have more space to do that, yes. That is correct. I, um, I made a commitment with the Commissioner of Transportation regarding the issues of a berm on that side to protect my property in terms of lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an invasive process and um, 
and that was a commitment we made and he he made to me. Yep. Um, so that's pretty important to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering what would be the costs and issues or I guess what I'm proposing is the option of boosting that I understand the horizontal distance doesn't mm -hmm. allow for the berm that you'd like because this isn't such a small area. It's trying to shoehorn in something. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what about us bringing it up four feet with retaining wall before you do a berm on top of that? Um, so retaining walls is something that we can look at. Um, there are some concerns with the retaining walls, such as vandalism. Um, anytime you build something at, at a facility like this, there's a potential for that area to be uh, you know, tagged up with spray paint and other things, and that's something that we would want to discourage to some extent. Um, is there anything else that you'd want to add, Tina? It would to be that? another thing to maintain. Right. Also. I'm thinking of one of these big, big concrete, printed concrete block mm -hmm. retaining walls that like we see the new bridge in Middlesex, is it, mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. those yep. that are... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to add expense to this. I'm trying to protect my interests and come to a reasonable cost-effective alternative. But to me, a, a three-foot drop in height isn't going to protect me from any of the things that the commissioner promised to me as, as part of our <coughs> yeah. agreement. So, so it would be a, a multi a multi step um, screening that we'd be able to provide. So, yes, it would be a three foot decrease in height of the park and ride, plus any additional increase of the berm, right? So, if we could bring the berm up, say two feet, and decrease the parking lot by three feet, now that would give you an, a, a change in grade of about uh, five feet there. And then on top of that, what we would do is we would make sure, and we've we've actually evaluated this to some extent is looking at sight distances from your home down into the park and ride. And, and so we've looked at and evaluated how high the shrubbery and trees would need to be in order to fully screen the park and ride from your, uh, from your home. And we've, we've come to the conclusion of somewhere between six to eight feet is what we would need in total height, berm plus vegetation. To, to, to screen your home, the second floor of your home from the park and ride facility. And that's, that's definitely what we want to do and we'll be working towards accomplishing. Um, it, it, it's not necessarily 100% possible with just one form of, of screening or the other, but with a combined landscaping and berm, we believe we can accomplish that, yes. What's the process from here once you come up with a design that your preferred design and everybody buys into it. You, next, still, yeah, you, you still have to go through a permit process? We, we would have to, um, once we got a con conceptual plans, um, we would, so, so, a lot of times we'd hold another public, a public hearing, um, and we start on um, our um, home and plans is, is more detailed design, which we have to get all our permits for. But we would, we also need something from the DRB, but we don't do that until we get to final plans, because that's the last permit that we, you know, we would get. So we would be coming in front of the DRB with all of our um, lighting, landscaping, and um, to get a permit from, from the place. How are you addressing stormwater on site? Great question. Um, so we, we have looked at stormwater, and as you noticed in that first alternative, we had a stormwater location that was here. Um, we do not show a stormwater location on the plan uh, under this alternative. We're looking at a couple different things. We've evaluated some of the soils that are on site, and they're classified as soil type B, which basically just means that it's well draining for the, for the most part and allows water to infiltrate into the soil that's there pretty well. Um, we're, we're looking at doing a couple different things. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at is putting a, um, a space here um, that would allow for in inf infiltration along the entire edge of the park and ride. So it would be like a stone diaphragm. And as water drained off of, the, out of, off of the pavement, it would go into the diaphragm, almost like a large French drain to some extent. You can think of it that way. And it would infiltrate then. Um, any water that overtops that would then go into this proposed swale and then drain down through this area as conveyance and ultimately uh, to a catch basin that's located here at this location. 
So that would be some of the ways. One of the things that we'll still need to evaluate based on the permitting and things like that is we may potentially need to do some stormwater mitigation here in this location, but it would not require us to increase any pavement or lighting or anything else. It would just be, it would look like landscaping, but it would treat some of the stormwater in that location. So as the water flows toward the, uh, for me, the far end, mm -hmm. yep. where the, there's a light green trough there, that'd be where the water would drain out? Yeah, so, so, any, so water that, say it fell here, right in the middle of the parking lot, it would drain down, go okay. through the stone diaphragm, and then into this swale, and then flow along the swale, under this driveway, along the swale, and ultimately into the catch basin that's there now, which is currently picking up the water from the existing facility. And that's sized right, given that um, you're increasing the... We would evaluate it, and if needed, if needed, we would make sure that it had the capacity to take the water. Yes. So that's about roughly, roughly a, a doubling of impervious surface there? Um, it's actually, well, it's not quite doubling. Uh, as you can see, we're, um, we're eliminating the pavement that's up here. So some of the pavement that's up here, we're actually getting rid of, um, even though we are expanding over here. Um, but we'll, you know, as we apply for our permits, we would need to make sure that there's, a, there's enough capacity within all the stormwater features to handle the amount of runoff coming off of the site. Any other questions? Um, yes, at the the entrance to 62, would that be a stop sign? Or? It would be a yield condition, is the way we show it now. Um, so it's a driveway uh, that would require people to yield to any traffic that's in the road. Um, and that we've done the evaluation as far as the traffic on 62 to confirm that it would not, any vehicles leaving the park and ride would not impact the traffic along 62 uh, and decrease the level of service that would be there at that, um, at that road. Is that a widened lane to the right of the right lane anyway? Um, so as you can, there's, it's a wide shoulder, I think is what you're seeing. Yeah. Uh, this here, yeah, so that's a wide shoulder and then there's two lanes. Right. Yep. So you'd actually be pulling out onto the shoulder, I guess is what I'm saying. At first, yeah, and then we would restripe it right. um, to to to, um, to make sure that it you know meets all the standards. It would be a third lane for a distance. For mm -hmm. sure, yeah, until they accelerate enough to merge into into 62. Any more questions? No, thank you very much. Thank you. I just, uh, the only thing I'd like to say is that I hope you'll continue to work with the neighbors uh, so that you design something that is okay with everyone yeah, and you work through it rather than come to the DRB and we argue about it again. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you want to add anything? No, no. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think so. Yeah. 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 Now more stuff. Taking our extension cord too. Yeah. 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 I, I probably did. I just, it's just in an, the email he sends to me. Oh, he takes the email. I'm on my What are you getting here? Is that what it's just my regular old email? I'll let her take it apart. No, he can't do it. He can take it apart. He's out of the club. I'll pay you a pen. What time? What time? What time? You know, he's, I should just have Dane send it to Zubin. I'm having to send it to the Select Board, and then I send it from Select Board to this.
It's like a benign email. So I can either show you how I think you can do it on there or talk to your tech guy. You should be able to say, um, you want to have stuff automatically forward. Oh, yeah, we can play today. Um, then mail out all this stuff that are viral. It goes right to it. Yeah, just like a little bit. You can borrow it. I was sitting here feeling like an idiot about it. Like, it, it, it knew I was in your body. I know, that's what it is. He's saying angry. 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 He's I don't know. They're, they're going to ask a question and you get to give yeah. feedback and you get to see a little survey. Yeah, you're going to see, see the answers. It's like, oh, it's like, it's like cool yeah, stuff. Think, think, think about trivia. <laughs> Concerns meeting for the bridge number three over the Stevens branch on US Route 302. I'm Laura Stone, I'm the scoping engineer. This is Carolyn Carlson, the design project manager. So the, let me move this a little bit down. One more click. So the purpose of the meeting is to provide an understanding of our uh, approach to the project, to provide an overview of the project constraints that we took a look at, discuss the alternative that we selected, and provide an opportunity to, for you guys to ask questions and hear your concerns about the project. So here's a project map. There's the bridge right there. Uh, it's between Route 62 and Berlin State Highway. This is Fisher Road up here. We have the Vermont uh, Hospital up here, Central Vermont Hospital. Here's an aerial view. Uh, most of you are pretty familiar with this, I bet. Um, we have Capstone Computer Barn over here. This is the Price Chopper parking lot. Uh, Aspen Dental, there's the Urgent Care is, is over there a little bit farther. So meeting overview, we're going to go over the VTrans project development process, very similar to what Tina had gone over. Uh, we're going to give you a project overview, so we're going to tell you about the, project, uh, the existing conditions, the constraints that we looked at, the alternatives that we considered, and ultimately our selected alternative. We're going to talk to you about the maintenance of traffic options we considered. Uh, schedule and a summary of the project. I have questions down here, but really if you have any questions um, while we're presenting, please interrupt us. So here's the VTrans project development process. The project's been funded and right now we're in this project definition stage where we, we look at the resource, resources and the constraints Based on those, we evaluate our alternatives, uh, compare them to each other. We have this pu public participation phase. Ultimately, we'd like to build consensus on the project. After this public participation phase is over, this project will be defined and it can go into design. That's when the permitting will take place, the right-of-way will take place, 
will develop the the plan set, the estimate, and the, the specifications. So the first question. Your clickers. Your clickers. Who are you representing? And this is the only uh, slide where you can pick more than one. Hold on, hold, hold on, Mark. It's, it's actually, it's actually only letting you select one. Is it? Yeah, I can, I can click different ones. They just switches off. Oh, shucks. Oh, this isn't the one. I think it's another question. Okay. How often do you use this segment of U.S. Route 302? Okay, so a lot of people use it pretty often. How often do you walk over the bridge? Rarely, never. That's not surprising as there's a sidewalk on the bridge, but it's sort of a ghost sidewalk right now. How often do you bike over the bridge? Never, one rarely. What is your reason for attending this meeting? Specific concern, general interest, live in close vicinity, or other? So project overview, um, we're going to look at the existing conditions. We're going to talk about the alternatives we considered and go over our selected alternative. Uh, just to start out, a description of terms used. This is the bridge rail, what we call the bridge rail that keeps you from driving off the bridge. The bridge deck is the surface that your car drives on. The superstructure are the beams that hold the deck up. We gener a lot of times when we say superstructure, we, we do mean the beams and the deck. And then the abutment and substructure are used interchangeably. Those are the supports at either end of your bridge. So this is a picture looking east over the bridge. Uh, it's classified as an urban principal arterial. It's a 60-foot span rolled beam bridge. It is owned by the state of Vermont, so there's no local share. And it was constructed in 1928, and so it's a 90-year-old bridge. Uh, it's, it's really it's surpassed its expected life of 80 years. Here's a picture of the bridge deck. Uh, it is at risk for full depth pop-outs. You can see there's concrete falling off, a lot of exposed rebar. The deck is currently rated uh, four or poor. The superstructure, substructure, and channel are all rated as a six or satisfactory. Here's a picture looking west over the bridge. There's a uh, historic railing. It's a concrete uh, parapet and tubular metal rail. It's substandard and it's not crash tested. The bridge has a substandard width as you have all probably noticed. Um, the shoulders are substandard by four feet. And not only that, but it doesn't match the roadway geometry east and west of the bridge. Um, also, the existing sidewalk you can see there doesn't, uh, doesn't conform to the ADA standards. It's three and a half feet, whereas a five foot sidewalk is required. Also utilities, overhead utilities, you can see them crossing over the bridge right here. Here's a picture of the western abutment. You notice laid up stone wing walls in the very, very side of this picture. It was widened in 1941. You can see that joint right here. 
And the eastern abutment, uh, partially laid up stone. Again, it was widened and I think the joint was yeah. somewhere in that area. Resource constraints. It is substandard. It has substandard hydraulics and bank full width. Uh, the bank full width currently is 60 feet. What's recommended by the ANR standards is 88 feet. It also is, the bridge is overtopped uh, below the 50-year uh, design event. This is also in the northern long-eared bat habitat, which just means that if there's any tree cutting that has to be done, it's going to have to be done within a certain time frame, usually in the winter prior to the project. Here's a typical, here's a, a layout of the project that went through the road diet a couple years ago. So as you can see, there's this center turning lane, two 11 foot travel lanes, and these wide, wide shoulders. Now over here on this side of the page, that's the bridge railing. So our bridge is just at the edge of the page here, but you can really see that it, it constricts at the bridge location. So the existing conditions, here's an existing layout. This red line here is the right of way. Uh, this gray area is the bridge. This green is that little sidewalk. Um, we have the railroad right here. Also to note, there's a lot of underground utilities um, on the downstream side of the bridge. This is a sewer line right here. That's a sewer siphon station. And here's a water line about 15 feet downstream from the bridge and another water line about 45 feet downstream from the bridge. Both these, uh, I believe all of these utilities are owned by the city of Montpelier. The sewer line wouldn't be with the, the water line, line would be ours. Yeah. Okay. So design criteria and considerations. There's high traffic here. There's about 15,000 vehicles per day. There's a design hourly volume of 1,500. We have 5.6% trucks, a design speed of 40 <coughs> miles per hour. Utilities is something that we're going to have to take into cons consideration during the design. There's definitely gonna be an overhead utility move. And it's also an area of significant commercial development. There's uh, several commuter buses that run through the area per day. So here's the alternatives we considered. We looked at the no action, but with that deck rated a four, we took that off the table immediately. There's a deck replacement and superstructure replacement. In terms of, um, They've really accomplished the same thing as, as far as the road users are concerned. They both have a 40-year design life. They would both uh, have an 11-5 typical, so two 11-foot travel lanes with 5-foot uh, shoulders, and the sidewalk would be eliminated. Then we looked at a full bridge replacement. We'd widen to the minimum standard and then some matching the corridor. So we'd really be meet, uh, trying to match that eight, 11, 11, 11, eight typical with a five and a half foot sidewalk as I know the town does have plans for a sidewalk in the future. Um, this would have an 80 year design life. We could meet bank full width, but it would still not meet the design flood as we're in a, it has a flood insurance study along the river, um, but it would be improved. Uh, so our selective alternative was uh, full bridge replacement. While the substructures are in satisfactory condition, the structure is at the end of an, its intended design life, and we don't believe that the width meets the needs of the corridor long term. So this would widen to the minimum standard, the 11 foot 8. Uh, the sidewalk would be widened and maintained for this alternative, meeting ADA standards have an 80 year design life. Historic documentation would be required because of that railing, although uh, we wouldn't be required to put a historic railing back in, that, in, in place. Right of way will be needed. 
and utility relocation will be needed. So here's the proposed typical section. You can see the existing bridge up here. And this is the proposed bridge down here. So we'd be widening it quite a bit on each side. The proposed layout would match very closely to that typical section on the, that western side. Um, we propose for the sidewalk to extend it out to about the end of the railing on this side, but on this side, considering that you have the sidewalk project in your plan, we would probably, I believe, extend that out to this driveway here. So there would be some permanent impacts over here outside the right-of-way, over here. Here's the proposed profile. Uh, we'd be, oops, sorry. We'd be widening this span, but in terms of what you guys see, there's really no change. Because of the flood insurance study, we're not allowed to raise the roadway here. Um, there's also the railroad crossing quite close to the bridge, which would limit what we would be able to raise anyway. And Carolyn? So. <clears throat> Just have to make sure that I hit the right buttons. So, means of traffic options. So this is really where the, the, the issues um, come up, is that we evaluated a few, a few things. We could do an off-site detour. We could phase the construction. And because of the width of the new structure and what we have for an existing structure, we would have to do that in three phases. It's a much longer construction duration. And then we looked at a temporary bridge. So the temporary bridge that we would propose would be a two-lane temporary bridge with a sidewalk. And it would be placed on the downstream side. And that would require some additional right-of-way. So this is what we're looking at here. So this would, orange would be our temporary bridge and our temporary alignment. That fluorescent yellow is the sidewalk. Green? Okay. Fluorescent green. Um, so basically this allows the contractor to build most, build the whole new bridge. Our hopes would be to get everything built at once. And because of the location of this temporary bridge, that is why we would need to relocate these overhead utilities so that the contractor can set that and have room to build a new bridge. Um, the, we did look at an upstream option, but that actually, um, there's a much more impact to, these, uh, to this business in particular. And uh, it just would create a very tight radius, just is not a, uh, an option that we wanted to move forward with. So, and this is a kind of dark here, but, um, so there's price chopper way over there. So the temporary would be over here. Um, and you can see, you can't even see in this picture, but there's overhead utilities. It looks better on the screen. Yeah, it does. It looks great on the screen. Um, so that's <laughs> what we're talking about, the impacts. And these trees would have to go as well. There's that siphon station. Oh, yep. Whoops. We'll go back for a minute. Yeah. Uh, it's right there. So the siphon station is somewhere right in there. That's where those... It's hard to really see. Sorry, we apologize. So right now um, we're looking at construction in 22 or 23. A lot of that depends on uh, utility relocations and how difficult that ends up being. Obtaining the right away that we need, uh, and you know funding and end of it. You know, a lot of our projects, the fundings have been pushed out a year or two sometimes, even though we're Say 2022, because it's 2024. But <laughs> so, in summary, what we've uh, presented to you is uh, a full bridge replacement, which allows us to match that corridor, which, in the long run, is is the right thing to do. Um, you have to remember that when we're building these bridges, these bridges are meant to last 80 to 100 years. So way beyond our life expectancy at this point. 
and um, we had to think about the future, and that's why we designed that way. We would have that new sidewalk. We'd actually add additional sidewalk um, lane. We have the two-lane temporary bridge to maintain traffic, um, which kind of matches what's there now as far as width. Uh, we will need right away uh, in the area of utility relocation needed. And our goal is, because we've got underground water and underground sewer, we don't want to mess with that. So we're going to do our best to avoid that at all costs. So when you think about this project, what would you most be concerned about? This is your little clicker. Bridge aesthetics, environmental impacts, business impacts, recreational impacts, traffic impacts, other, or you just don't care? Are we good? Okay, so based on this, um, interesting, we're concerned, which we kind of suspected in the long run, was the traffic impacts. And that's why we're proposing the temporary bridge. Um, if we did that stage construction and, and didn't do that, um, in my honest opinion, and I think it's the opinion of most people, is that the impacts would be, traffic impacts would be much, much greater. You would have long delays. Um, it would be very difficult to keep traffic moving. Which design aspect is the most important to you? We've got additional shoulder width and bike accommodations, the aesthetics, what type of bridge railing we might put there, the construction year, the length of construction, the cost, and other. And I don't know if we even mentioned much about the length of construction, but with a temporary bridge, it probably would be a two season in the sense that maybe we would get the temporary bridge installed possibly in the fall and then they'd come back in April and start construction on the project. Um, because it's so wide, it's gonna take a little bit longer to even to build. So we, want, we wouldn't be able to do that all in one season necessarily. Does everybody have a clicker? I know there was a couple who walked in. A couple people walked in. They later. have clickers. I don't yeah. know if they're using them. We have an understanding. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have them. Everybody has them that wants them. So, so D, construction duration is the most concern. We can talk about that after we're done. You can um, explain some of your concerns to us so that we understand as we move forward with the project. And then we always ask this question. Did you find this presimentation to be too technical, too simplified, just about right, or not much use at all? You can just send us home. I like it just about right. <laughs> Perfect. So, oh, did you find the recommended scope of the work satisfactory? So that's basically what we proposed. And I we're good. And now, questions. You know, take this opportunity, ask us any questions, and we will try to provide those answers so that as we move forward, because after this meeting, um, we will start working on those conceptual plans and get moving so that we can have a project in 2022. Hey, you mentioned something out right away, so we're looking at uh, uh, that situation. Do you know what they would be specifically? I, I don't know specifically, but let's go back to that slide. Can we go back to that? I own a piece of a parcel of property yep. right adjacent to that roadway. Yep, and let's look at that. And that temporary bridge and or the permanent bridge. So where do you own, sir? Right in the triangle, pretty this much one? between, uh, no, between oh. the railroad bed and oh, Greg, 302. Oh, Gregory? Right on, yep. So, so this red line right here, this, mm -hmm. this heavy duty red line, mm -hmm. that's the existing right away okay. line. So, in order for us to build this temporary bridge, we would need some property kind of like, kind of follow my red dot here, something like that. Mm -hmm. And that would be a temporary easement that we would acquire from you. Um, what happens is, is after we, we do our conceptual plans, do our preliminary plans, we will go out and meet with you personally and kind of okay. show you with right away just to say, okay, this is where we think that limit's going to be. Um, we you get a feel for service, it. The survey, engineering, and well, the survey has all been done right okay. now. But we would go out and we would design, fine tune where those limits are going to be, because we don't really know right now. Mm -hmm. um, so then, what we would do is, uh, 
and we we have bring a right away agent with us, mm -hmm. and he'll talk to you, ask you a few questions, and at that point we develop right away plans, mm -hmm. and once those right away plans are developed, uh, they will our right away section will begin to assessing um, the value the, the value of that land, mm -hmm. and then they will negotiate with you as to you know, we're going to offer you. You know, for this temporary easement, we may offer you two thousand dollars, but it's come and and then you either agree or not agree. That type of thing. Mm -hmm. We can't. I don't know right now. That's fine. But that's but fine. that's about the area I'm looking for. Your property it would be a temporary easement. The one thing that I'll bring up is that the interstate bridges that are scheduled, They're right. Maybe. And your and your temporary uh, your temporary detour was the Barry Montclair Road, right? But I do not think that. And I just my point being. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Make sure you don't have mine. Okay, but we I don't think we are proposing on that temporary detour piece. Have you seen the latest? I, I just wanted to bring up that I we think would, we would, it would not happen. At the, we would not want that to happen at the same time. We would make sure that that wouldn't happen at the same time. And I also wanted to bring up again that I had mentioned before that I think that when you get ready to do the interstate bridges, you should look at Airport Road and talk to Barrytown about using that as a detour because people are going to use it anyway. Right, and and we've actually so. Um, so I'm no longer the project manager for the, the interstate bridges. I'm so upset about that. Now, um, so the plan right now is basically we're just doing all crossovers on the interstate. Um, but it, it closes the southbound on-ramp. No, we're not doing that anymore. You're not? I do not believe we're doing that. <coughs> we are it, doing it, crossovers it, on the interstate now. We kind of took that off the table. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much sure. Are you on the uh, it, it doesn't matter to me. I <laughs> want to bring the point up that we... If we, if, if we were to, we would make sure that that doesn't happen. And um, <coughs> I will check in again on that project with respect to that. But my understanding is we actually went back to the table, came up with a whole new traffic plan on the interstate. To construct the bridge, bridges. Um, but you're right. At one point, we were talking about closing that, and right. I think that, based on your concerns at the time, we opted not. <coughs> we they were able to come up with a plan to try and keep traffic on the interstate. But I will double check on that, and we'll make sure we get back to you with that information. So I just wanted to note one thing. On the question and comments page, I noticed you took a picture of this page. Um, there's a website where we're going to be posting uh, this presentation with all of the uh, clicker responses that we received tonight. All future plan sets will be put on that website, and so that's, I mean, this will be posted tomorrow and it will be accessible. There, in, it's actually that is on the back it is on page the back of this sheet. sheet. There is a the link. And so hopefully all future presentations as well as plan sets, conceptual plan sets, preliminary, et cetera, et cetera, will be posted up on that website. And I can send you the link to oh well. As soon as we have the plans, the Berlin plans, the, the interstate project, mm -hmm. they're almost done with the preliminary plans for that project and that will be those will be completed in the probably in the, within the next um, one to two months. And I'll make sure that we send you the link to where those plans are so that you can share them with the select board. Okay. So that the exit seven. This is the exit, yeah. the whole interstate, those four, yeah. one, two, right. four decks. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, this particular crossing may eventually be a crossing for the cross from our path. So we want to make sure the bridge accommodates that. I think that they put shoulders at you. Okay. Um, but if you could check on that, 
what is cross promote again? Like, cross my trail, you mean? He said that. Sorry, I'm relaying Dan's comments. Central, sorry, yeah. Central Vermont path. Okay, so, so very Montpelier. Yeah. Yeah. So this plan right here, I think that we've got the we're yeah. calling it an eight foot by plane over here, right? Or east or west, but the, the east traffic, and then the eight foot coming this way west with that sidewalk. So that would likely be striped with, striped with a five a, foot. We would lane with a three foot buffer. We would pro probably stripe it similar to <coughs> out there right now. Okay, so we will reduce some documents. Yeah, that would be Just great because I have, we haven't it. heard that. Okay. And then the second one, speaking with the public transit folks, it looks like the alternative allows for traffic to happen through the temporary bridge. That was something that A little bit very slower, but it will happen. Okay. <laughs> They're redesigning routes now, so that may help, but you'll see uh, the bus traffic there change slightly over time when those revised routes get implemented. So the temporary bridge was something they supported. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, I think that what you're going to find here is like right now it's a straight shot, traffic mm -hmm. goes fast, right? You have right. the light it's over here, slow. you got the train tracks there, but with this alignment, it, you're going to have to go slow. What did we? I think we have it shown at what? 30. 30 at 30 miles an hour, but we may find that we may have to make it even 25 miles an hour depending on making sure we can build the entire structure as a whole. So how long would this take to go? So what I like what I like to do with my projects is I um, it's gonna take at least one construct at least what's great is if you can like install the temporary bridge, maybe get some of the approach work done and then walk away for the winter. Come back April fifteenth, which is our our date that we allow contractors to start doing construction and then they would switch traffic over onto the temporary and then start building that new bridge. So it would be, um, if we start like the fall, advertise it in the summer of 2022, it would all be done in the fall of 2023. It would take like a year and a half, 18 months, give or take. Then again, it may be a project that we decide that we can do in one season that is they get in there April 15th, put the temporary bridge in, put the temporary approaches in, move traffic over, build it, and be walk away in November. It's a tight, tight frame because this bridge is so wide. Um, but that is an alternative as well. We still would advertise it in the fall, but the contract would go back out until April. Assuming that's the scale, what's the, the difference between the width of the current bridge and the temporary bridge? The temporary bridge is a tw it would be a 24 feet rail to rail, so two 12 foot lanes, one in each direction. Plus, um, we can get away with like a four foot minimum sidewalk, so it's going to be 20 feet. Plus your railing. Plus, so the other thing that's hard to you don't see it, but um, so let's say this is the edge of your travel way right mm -hmm. here. This would this line right here that I'm kind of following. Mm -hmm. That's your face of rail. So then there's a two feet behind that your buffer. For your material so when you do that you start getting into this little wing wall here so then that's why i was saying that I'd like to be able to build that as a whole sometimes we can do that after we're still not really sure what those foundations are going to be we don't know we have to go out there and get borings to see what the soils are whether there's sludge what we always try to do is what we what's called integral abutments which is driving piles um, and then putting a, a concrete, like a three by 10 or 15 foot, we'll just kind of call it a cap. It's an abutment over those piles. It's the least expensive route, but we don't know whether we can do that until we get boring and see what kind of soils we have. And if there's a lot of ledge, we would just build an abutment to ledge. So I'm just curious about um, the holiday traffic that we're currently experiencing on the Barry Montpelier Road and how that would be, how it would affect traffic flow that's already backed up since we put the, bi the bike lanes in. So are we talking like at Christmas time? Yeah, so like holiday season. I mean, we've got long waits. The traffic is just backed up and people I, are complaining. I don't think you'd have any because we would not have traffic on the temporary bridge. 
during that time, we, we would have it. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with uh, uh, the East Montpelier Route 14 project um, on, off of US 2, where they ha it was all under construction last year, um, and it's still going to be under construction next year. But what they did is they installed the temporary bridge, and they just left it there for the winter. They shut it off on either end, and they just left it there so that there was no traffic on there. And that's what they would do here. I agree with you. I don't think it would be a wise decision to move traffic onto the temporary bridge during the holiday season because of the, all the traffic. It's okay to do that for like a six month period, but to do it for eight, 18 months, I agree. I think that um, it would create too much backup, too much havoc. Well, and hopefully in the long run, that gets reduced a bit. Right. When the bridge is widened. Right. Have you guys done any traffic studies that show whether that relieves any of the existing congestion there? We personally have not. Mm -hmm. But I would assume that it would because but. right now it's going from that, this really wide roadway to this <coughs> very constricted area. And the other issue you have on the east side is you do have that turning lane and right now that taper length uh, for that turning lane is substandard. There's not enough length there and so I don't know if you've noticed any backup of traffic from that maybe there is maybe there isn't but this would allow to construct that that taper length to to standard that's going mm -hmm. it's the other side right yeah. I don't have a picture of that but we're talking like right up, right up in here, right? Yes, it's the turn that goes, goes into, into the price chopper. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this pretty much should be like eventually that whatever width we do here, it should be that all the way through with the left turn lane. Yeah. That would be the future of that. Probably a project in the late 15 years. Waiting for the bridge to get better. Because mm -hmm. they can't really do much of anything with the traffic on the other side. By price shopper because of the bridge restriction right now with that width. You can't really do a lot of. But it doesn't seem the nature of that road is for high speed traffic. I mean, we just knocked the lanes out, we put bike lanes in there, and there's several trains of thought on that. It's a lot easier driving down that road now because somebody isn't blowing by in the right at 90 miles an hour. Most people think that's a good thing. It took it takes a whole two more minutes to get from the wayside to price drop yeah. now. You know. So to, to worry about traffic to rectify a bridge that's about to fall in the yeah. river, in my opinion, isn't really a big deal. And it isn't Route 89, it's Highway 302 going. It's our biggest shopping area. So um, I don't know where you I just don't like the green light. <laughs> for the left. Oh, even turn. <laughs> Here we go again. Now it's gone now. What is it? What's gone? The, the third over. light? Yeah, it's moved over. That's <laughs> <laughs> not mm. Anything else? This is your opportunity. No questions? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I will um, cut your quick fingers. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yours didn't work? Right. It wouldn't take your answer. You didn't like your answer. Yeah. Yeah. We have trip ones. We'll have to check the batteries. It was programmed to be yeah. quick. They had those clickers that we couldn't see. Yeah, my buddy did grab I just waited and read the video. Oh, yeah, it's not our life. I haven't seen the the next slide, and then he's coming back on. Yeah, you can't see what's happening. Hey, Dan. What? You want help? I'm too short. So drop it down first. Okay. Come down right here. This is high tech. There we go, thank you. Responsibility for something that's not mine. No, that's intense. I know. It's good to do. Nope, no worries. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be an answer. That's too low. Yeah. <laughs> it's after. Yeah. I've got a galaxy. Yeah, I have. Floating my vision. The boards and commissions? Yeah, the appointments to the boards and commissions. Um, we have several. This is the time of year that um, I go and check with people that are on boards that whose term is expiring to find out if they'd like to be uh, reappointed. Um, and the reappointments um, for one year would be Matt Levin as the representative to the Central Vermont Solid Waste District, Bob Warnick as representative to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, Carla Nuisel as the alternative representative to Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, Bob Warnick to the Transportation Advisory Committee at Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, and finally, the last one year is Ellen Drysdale to the Conservation Commission Recreation Committee. Um, these have been posted, and are, I have checked with all the parties involved, and they would like to be reappointed. Move to appoint all of the aforementioned volunteers to those committees. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The next group is for two-year reappointments, um, and that would be uh, Beth Dow to the Conservation Recreation Committee, Phil Gentili to the Conservation Commission Recreation Committee, and Henry Legue Jr. to the Public Works Board. Move to appoint all three of those folks to their respective boards as noted. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing, hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Three-year reappointments to expire March of 2021. Robert Allen to the Public Works Board, Wayne Lamberton to the Public Works Board, Gary LaRoche to the Public Works Board, and Ellen Sulik to the Conservation Commission Recreation Committee. Move to appoint all of those people to the boards as stated. Second. Second. Um, any other discussion or appointments? Uh, hearing none, uh, those in favor, say aye. 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 Those Just opposed? Aye. aye. Those and, opposed? Mm -hmm. And finally, I have four year reappointments John Fitzhugh to the Development Review Board, John Friedrich to the Development Review Board. Move to appoint both of them to the DRB. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Let me stand. Um, anything else, Dana? Um, in here, I'm just going to give you all the paperwork that needs to be signed for these appointments. Bear with me while I thumb through because I've got a lot of them. And then um, the appointment form for the solid waste district which is matt levin he's got one in there but this one is to go back to them it needs the signature of the chairperson so if you'd like to vote to have the chairperson sign that move to have the chair sign matt levin's appointment to the central vermont solid waste district second all in favor aye, aye. aye. Careful, don't hand me mine. <laughs> I'm, I'm just don't, signing. Don't be ripping it up. Very quick, am I? I can rearrange everyone's signature. <laughs> yeah, at least I'm signing the right place.
calls to voting no. <laughs> You don't have to show up. <laughs> Some point, though, they'll get sick of you not being there. That makes it every Monday night. <laughs> That's what time. Mm -hmm. What does Kathy think about that? Yeah. Kathy is no longer at my house. Mm. So I really don't have anything to do on Monday nights. Okay. Well, call me then. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm getting 14 of them back. <laughs> I saw the paper today and mine was the best. Thank you. Fish on the I sheet. That's what you know. That's great. <laughs> I'll take care of that. I was trying to. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you need a pen? No, I got it. Next thing on the agenda is appointment to town, uh, the town representative for the Central Vermont Internet. The town received a letter from the clerk of the Central Vermont Internet, Jeremy Hansen. Um, asking for a representative for the town to be appointed. And do we have to, um, by our um, administrative code, do we have to put this out there to the public, like like our other appointments, because we haven't actually advertised it? We uh, No, I have not done this one. Um, probably, I think, to be safe, I would. Okay. Um, to do the normal, we post it here, right. um, and we put it on the internet okay. for 10 days. Okay. So. Not, so. to, not to shock you or anything, but I'm hoping to throw my hat in the ring for that so I can be on that board. I'm hoping that, too. <laughs> I'm glad you spoke up before I made that motion. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll bring that back to you at the next meeting. Okay. okay. Um, and, and congratulations on that. It's yeah. a lot of work to get that many people. Thank to you. Say, get, just everybody. And, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 in the round table, I'll have another little update about okay. that. If I'm, uh, the approval of a special event permit for the Central Lot Runners. We have three special event permits that um, is something that you have approved before. Jeff Prescott um, is the applicant. He's here to give you any information that you would like about these. Um, so, Jeff, why don't I just have you explain sure. what they are? Uh, Come on. Sure. Up. So I'm here on behalf of Central Vermont Runners, and uh, we have three annual road races that have some connection with the town of Berlin. Uh, the Paul Millman 10 Miler, uh, which is in the um, Montpelier Junction area um, of town, and also the Capital City Stampede, which travels in that part of town, and then the Berlin Pond uh, 5 Miler, which is here around the pond. Uh, for the Paul Melman 10 Miler and Capital City Stampede, uh, parking, registration, start, finish, everything's in Montpelier. There will just be runners on the road out and back for a period of time. Uh, for the, the Berlin Pond Race, that's entirely within the town here. Uh, we have parking and registration here at the town office, and then people run down to the pond and the start and finish are at the pond area. I have spoken with the police about this. They're they're used to it from having done it in previous years. They are on board with it. We have to approve the special event permit applications for the Paul Mailman 10 Miler, the Capital City Stampede, and the Berlin Pond 5 Miler. Second. Uh, do you have any uh, plans on posting for the races? Uh, we generally put up signs in advance yeah. around the That's Berlin the Pond rules. area. Yeah. Um, the last few years we have not done that for the other two, but we could if you would, if, if you would like it. We have the signs. <laughs> I just thought, I live down by the junction. I just found it, in, uh, I think people down there found it um, helpful to know that it was coming. It's only coming out my head. So uh, any particular time period in advance that you'd like the signs up? I would say a couple days. Yeah. You know. Okay. They yeah. tend to disappear. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I know, but I mean, if you did it a couple days yeah. before, at least then they have a warning. Yeah. And we can of course, that. it's on the weekends anyway, so. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.
these permits that signed by the chairman and Jeff, I'll send those to you. Okay. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you for coming in. The bridge thing was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. See? Good thing you came. Yeah. <laughs> Better than TV? Yeah. <laughs> That's our right now, yeah. Um, see here. ADPA transportation certificate of mileage data. Right, that is the um, the certificate that is done every year to so they know of how much to give us for our highway um, grant. Next year, I will have to add. 50 feet, I guess, to this, but I can't for this, for this. Uh, and it did not change, and this is just, I've checked the box, that had no changes in mileage, and I'm asking the board to accept that and to sign the certificate, even though they only give you three lines. Move to approve the certificate of highway mileage for the year ending February 10th, 2018. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. In this agenda, we can go into that. All ready to go. If you don't want to have a new night, we have approval of the doctor's licenses. Yes, I do. I hope. Um, approval of select board minutes for February 21st and March 5th. I have one minor addition to add to the end, right at the end of page three, just after the executive session, we should have a, a motion to adjourn by me, seconded by Pete, then it was unanimous. These are on the minutes of the 21st? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So because you weren't there, you'll abstain from that one too. But. <laughs> That's really my fault, not Bethany's, because the camera cuts off and she doesn't get that part. No worries. So I move to approve the minutes for the Wednesday, February 21st, 2018 meeting uh, with the previously noted addition. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, and for the March 5th, Move to approve the minutes for the Monday, March 5th, 2018 pre-town meeting and select board meeting as presented. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Um, I'm going to <laughs> Well, I'm wondering, is it in there? Well, I didn't see it. I've got a little askew here. If um, I can, I can wing it. If not, if you just give me the uh, the sign, the signature sheets, anything that's a signature sheet, I'll just read them off. We've gotten so soft since you've been do doing this work for us, Dana. I know. That's, yeah, that's I'm embarrassed that I can't put my hand on it. But I've so I've got back and forth. I've got an accounts payable warrant. I've got a um, general fund Northfield savings payment. I've got. Um, General Fund Balance Sheets, Sewer and Water Division. Yeah, you've got statements. Uh, there should be a payroll in yeah, there. Payroll. It's, 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 um, tax admin updates, internal yeah. entries. Yeah. Journal yeah. entries and tax administration. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, move, move to approve the general, uh, I'm sorry, move to approve the, the warrants for checks uh, 17924 through 17965 in the amount of $103,129.21. Also, the Town of Berlin General Fund, um, the Northfield Savings Bank uh, fiscal year 15 truck loan payment in the amount of 
$70.53. Also payroll warrant number 18-19, covering March 4th, 2018 through March 17th, 2018, in the amount of $42,850.83. Also, the um, statement balances for the water division, the sewer division, and the general fund. Also, the tax admin adjustments for February 2018, and the journal entries for um, February, February 18. I'll second that. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Do you repeat that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Words. Town Administrator Court, Nina? I have a very short report. Um, I'd like to thank the board for all their help during the um, town meeting um, time. Um, I think the town meeting went very smoothly, and I'm very appreciative of all the help that I got through that time. And finally, I will be leaving town on Wednesday, not returning until the 29th. So Tom will be back from his vacation. I will be in Berlin, Germany, as a matter of fact. Awesome. So um, I just want to know I won't be here. If a trip over the air, the town would pay for my airfare. I can put you in, in, in contact with uh, the higher ups there. They treated me very nicely when I went there. So. I was just kidding. Didn't even do that. <laughs> yeah, their, their town offices are a bit larger. A little bit? Yeah. Well, I'm hoping to kind of see. Go there when you're done. I'm going to a wedding, actually. Should be fun. Yeah. Mm. There's a neighborhood in Berlin called Vedding. It's spelled just like wedding, so it'd be funny if you were going to a wedding in Vedding. Oh, okay. Well, just saying. If I do, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. And there's some more. Yeah, there's a, a bunch of those that need to come back around. Oh, I'm sorry. Signatures you will do all year. <laughs> Till next week. First part. Oh, we have to. Well, we already signed all the liquor licenses for the year. Yeah. Sir. Oh, right, right, right. We need two more in here. I think so. Yeah. I think that blue folder was too. Damn it. Oh, what's that? That blue folder had signatures on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. over the blowtorch, I'm sure they love me. It's just anywhere there. It's fine. Yeah. Right. Ooh, I'm a lefty. Let's get creative here. For Brad, I'm missing somebody. I'm missing me. I am. Okay. Look, thank you. just for that and I lock the page and I'll hit my elbow and the whole thing goes blank. I think I'm I think I'm almost caught up here. Round table wing? No. Yeah. But you know um, it's all on the page. So um, I want to mention also about Central by Internet. The town of Elmore actually um, um, created a special town meeting to um, take up the question too because they didn't get to it in time for the regular town meeting. So they'll be having a four meeting for that, and we'll hopefully be appointing a member to that as well in time for the, the May meeting. So we'll have 13 at our May meeting. Wow. Yeah. 
in Barrytown voting at their town meeting on the same day as Central Miami. That's the first meeting. So that's all I got. Me? Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, round table is now your chance if you have anything that you'd like to add that's not sort of agenda related or anything. If not, we get to finish. Oh, we get to finish. I was just saying, yeah. telling my ride nine. Um, What's that? Um, is there, uh, no. <laughs> is there I, anything that I need to be um, caught up to speed on or... Um, any information that I should have. I also had questions about the trainings that I need to go to. They are a financial burden for me at this time. The, the, um, the town takes town 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 covers that. Okay, so I just need to register and then... If you can go, let me know and I will register you. Okay. Um, if, are you thinking of the one this Saturday, the 24th? So there's one this Saturday and then the 10th of April, I think. There was, there was a, another training, too, that I had seen earlier that I had forwarded on to her that I thought might be interesting. Oh, okay. If you want to forward that on to Dana, he can register you for that. Right. Oh, so just send them to you and yeah. you'll register me? Yeah. Okay. And okay. if you could do it tomorrow, because I'll be af gone after that. Other than, or I can tap Diane and do it as well, but um, if you can, that'd be great. And have select board members claimed miles on travel to those things? or They haven't in the past, but I certainly think it's in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, I think it would be reasonable to pay mileage. Okay. Any yeah. other questions you have, you can ask Dana anytime. Right. Okay. Yeah, 12 o'clock at night's the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, you like the most honest answers, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, too, you might want an agenda, or I wasn't sure how she was getting yeah. that. Well, so, so you were emailed the packet, the PDF packet. If that's not convenient, then you can also, on Fridays, come over here and pick up an actual physical. I usually printer. email it to everyone, um, but not everyone prints it. I usually print Brad's. If you'd like me to print it, just tell me, and I could that do be that better so you don't have you to have do it. it. Because yeah. I know sometimes at home it's a little mm -hmm. odd sometimes to try to do it. So I'll be glad to. Um, but I will email it to you so you can look at it online, and then I'll have the actual agenda so you can have it in front of you at a meeting. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. You won't have to do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking maybe I should just start bringing my computer. But... Yeah. And of course, I can do that for anybody. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you need to have a session tonight? No. Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.